up there on a boat to go diving and I'm really excited. My friends arrived. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my gosh. That was such a stressful start to the trip. I just about panicked. My and now 15 kilometers of this. But I'm gonna get quite hot and sweaty, so I'm good, right? I am back on pavement. It took me two days to break up the driving to get the most north I've ever been in my van on Vancouver Island. It's a gorgeous drive, there's less people up there, more trees and more endless beauty. From the sunsets looking out from my van over the ocean to yearling eagles waiting in the trees for the right moment. I felt so grateful that no matter what the ups and downs and the challenges of life, that I've chosen to live my life like this, to make these experiences happen. Thanks to Siren the Step Van. Beautiful, hey? Oh, he's riding the tree up there. I do not care. There's eagles in the tree and they're really close. So where are we picking up the boat? Like, it would be the next... Yeah, the next... Yeah. yeah, you can see yeah, yeah, right and there. And then that's the marina. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. turn in there and if there's, if there's parking, there's a tree there. We can park here. Hi. Oh, look at that hooked beak. Looks like it. I don't often stay in a larger RV park type campgrounds, but I did this time knowing I was going to leave my van for the day while I was out on the boat. The cooler weather had made it so it wasn't too busy, and for views like this from where the van is parked, I'm truly not complaining. Looking out over the estuary, praying for rain for the salmon as they wait to come up the rivers. Looking out past the point to the islands, beyond excited for what the ocean had in store for us the next day. Glad to have other freedivers joining this trip. I was almost too excited to sleep when I finally got back to my van, hopped into bed and tried to sleep. Our group of divers and snorkelers all together had chartered this boat to take us to one of the most beautiful marine reserves that I've ever been to on the islands. You can truly see the difference in an area like this that isn't heavily fished, which hopefully acts as a seeding ground to keep other fishing areas populated. We're going up there on a boat to go diving and I'm really excited. Wouldn't it be funny? I have no idea. There, well, the harbor, the, it, there's yeah. an inlet over there, so maybe not. Whee! I wonder if they have a friendly uh, fish cleaning neighborhood seal. <laughs> Video is going to be atrocious too much later. <laughs> 
I've seen a few coyotes in the back streets of the city when I briefly lived there, but never a wolf. This young adult may have swum over from another island, as we were roughly there around slack tide, or it was foraging for food on the foreshore. He's very small. I'm not sure but I, our group was so delighted to get a great brief glance at this majestic being. Wild, not afraid, certainly keeping an eye on us and our noisy excitement. We can just swim right here. <laughs> oh, this, this is a beautiful swim. Yeah. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go to different areas. Yeah. And, and actually, the visibility doesn't look. Yeah. Down base. This is in, in the lee right here. So you can pretty well snorkel or dive at any time on the ebb. Yeah. You just can't get near the. Well, you get near the yeah. point. You just have nothing. Look, those are are those strawberries? They're tunicans. Now we don't have strawberries up here, okay. so a lot of those are uh, uh, called the frilled anemones. Okay. Um, and they're because they've been out of the water for so long, they they're losing their uh, water. Looking like a little oh. And we're in we're in hundred and twenty feet of water right okay. here. Wow. Yeah, so you, you can dive as deep as you The scoobers are going in. Freediving is something that I love deeply, going beneath the surface and entering a whole new world of life. I don't have a particularly exceptionally long breath hold. I can reach 20 feet often, 30 feet quite a bit, and 45 feet on this trip occasionally. And it has taken me quite a few years to build up to this. Diving the wall was a whole new experience, as diving into the endlessly watery depths of the unknown, where you know it's almost a hundred feet in depth below you, is quite something to wrap your head around. I find it easier to dive deeper when I can see the bottom after going down the first 10 feet. Then there's something reassuring about having something to move towards, to have a visual gauge of depth. We dove the wall for almost two hours, seeing the scuba divers come, go, and then move on as we bopped down to say hello as they floated around. <laughs> That's funny. 
He saw you? <laughs> Took a while though. I had to yeah. hang out. Same. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> So many fish, kelp greenling, perch, and various rockfish all make this warble their home too. The wall here was alive and taken over completely by a cloud of white, dotted with sponges and corals I've never seen the quantity of before. I've never seen a jellyfish quite like this magnificent sea nettle jellyfish. Just like the lion's mane's jellyfish, I steered well clear, but wow. My camera just doesn't do it justice with the yellows and purples of the many ribbons trailing behind. Finally, I also got to see the majestical sea pen in real life, waving in the current, me fighting hard to stay as still as possible in an area where the tide was picking up its pace significantly. It was a brief visit that I won't forget so soon. Abalone shells? I love, love swimming in kelp forests and was giddy with this excitement as we moved spot to spot through the islands. You can really tell when you're in a marine conservation area, the way the fish react to divers and humans visiting their world. I also couldn't believe the size of these plumose anemones too, like giant palm trees with the fattest of trunks to withstand the high currents that keep these waters so clear and fresh. The biggest, biggest highlight for me was seeing the sun stars at their mature sizes. I've never seen sunflower stars this big. I tried to, but I, from here I couldn't see any star, but I'll, I'll try down, going down. But you saw like, the landmark of what to look for. I think so. From here. These sea stars were several feet across, bigger than my head. Yellows and blues. I think I ran out of breath quicker from the sheer excitement of seeing these such beautiful large sun stars st still alive. Later in the day, the sun came out, lighting up the kelp forests with the most inviting light rays I've seen in a while. Not to mention the schools of fish. Did I mention the beautiful lincod, kelp greenling and rockfish? Take me back there in a heartbeat. Janice, how are you? 
worth it. <laughs> Woohoo! That was a sea otter? Yeah. Oh, I missed it! <laughs> Brad, you're so, like, there's a, an otter. <laughs> it's so casual. You should have been like, Way to be come here now. Come on now. Blessed with a final highlight of a few sea otters feeding on their backs at the surface. My heart was full of love and gratitude that this ocean is my backyard. Living in my tiny off-grid home on wheels, my van gives me access to go so many various beautiful places. Off-grid, out in the middle of nowhere, often. Whoa. Bye, sea otter. <laughs> You're all wobbly. <laughs> wow. Beautiful. You found that? Would you turn it over for me? Wow, it's beautiful. Oh, cute. Oh, that's a deep one. Isn't it beautiful? Look at all the iridescence in there. At it, what do you think it is? Uh, it's a sh sea. sea star, yeah, possibly. Yeah, the sea, so. Maybe, yeah, sea star, so. off the sea star. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a leg of a sea star. I think, <laughs> wow, cool. isn't that something? That's so beautiful. I'm so like, I'm exhausted, I'm happy, I'm you know, tired and happy. I'm
gosh. That was such a stressful start to the trip. I just about panicked. My ignition barrel, I think, is on its last legs and it was like crunchy. I couldn't turn it um, into accessories. I knew if I got to get accessories, I could jump the van, but, uh, or hot wire the starter motor, but it's fine. It's all working. There was a very kind mechanic at the gas station who was just like, you've been hanging too many keys off of your ignition barrel and older vehicles like this, it kills the ignition barrel. So I definitely need to uh, replace the ignition barrel, but it was so crunchy and I was like, oh, and then I wasn't going to force it past the crunch and he just forced it and it turned on, well, forced it gently. So I definitely need to replace this ignition barrel because I've got to start and stop this engine a couple more times. I've got a four hour drive ahead of me, a two or three hour ferry, and then another couple hour drive. Today is a huge day. I am a little stressed. And then I forgot to close the back door properly and it swung open and then somebody beeped at me and thankfully, and I was like, I hear noises, what's going on? So I've now secured the back door. I'm ready to go. I was so flustered. And what panicking that I'm so far north on Vancouver Island and I have so far south to go in one day. Whew, I just need a quick moment to like catch my breath, slow my heart rate down and stop panicking. Everything's okay. The van is running full of gas. We're good. I filled up the oil. I did an oil check. It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna get there, I'll update you soon. If you have any friends who might enjoy watching this video, please share this video with them. I appreciate the audience and community that gathers with me each week so much. You're changing my life and I hope I can share my excitement and adventures with you. Thanks so much for watching. A huge thank you to my Patreons who make doing this every week sustainable for me. can't wait to read your comments and until next time thank you so much for watching bye